Welcome to a new edition of our show titled Speak of Africa. We have so much information for you today. We're going to talk about so much. We're going to talk about Sierra Leone. We have presidential elections taking place on March 7, 2018 in Sierra Leone. So we're going to cover it. We're going to handle a profile of Sierra Leone and we'll present it to you so that you know what's really happening in that country. We're going to go back to South Africa. Jacob Zuma has to be fired because he has been a failure. If not, the ANC may lose the election in South Africa. We're going to talk about that. Next, we're going to talk about Nigeria. Nigeria is a big country in Africa. Nigeria has a president called Muhammadu Buhari. We're going to talk about this president. We're going to explain to you what the hopes of the people were when they elected him. Are the people happy with Buhari? Of course not. They are not. And one of the former presidents, President Olusegun Obasanjo, has been criticizing Buhari at every turn. We're going to talk much about that. Next, we're going to talk about Cameroon. The dictator in Cameroon just had celebrated his birthday, his 85th birthday, a few days ago. On the February 11th, there was the Youth Day, which made Anglophones to remember their day of rage, their day of mourning. When Anglophones think of the Youth Day, February 11th, it reminds them of the Nakba of the Palestinians. The Nakba is actually a day of rage for the Palestinians. It's a day that the Palestinians remember losing their land and everything to the Jews. Similarly, the Anglophones remember February 11, 1961, as the day that they lost their freedom as a result of the machinations and trickery of the French and the British. So they remember this day. In fact, when a few days ago, on February 11, President Paul Bia decided to celebrate, the Anglophones were very angry by this celebration. Not only the celebration of 11 February, but the celebration of the 85th anniversary of the dictator. We're going to talk a lot about that. We're also going to talk about Black History Month. Usually, our people love celebrating. They like to feel good. We think the time to feel good is over. We do not like to see black people and Africans celebrating all the time without thinking. We are more than animals. Animals should just eat and sleep. We think. That's what makes us human beings. So we're going to take you to Black History Month. For example, I was watching television the other day, they kept making noise about Black Panther movie, Black Panther movie. Oh, the movie makes us feel good. When I look at that movie, it reminds me of the Black Ploitation period, where white people made movies to make black people feel good. I think the time for feeling good is over. We should think about our problems and how to solve our problems. So we're going to start this show by talking about Black History Month. Black History Month was a month set aside so that black people can really reflect on their history as Africans. Are we reflecting or are we just partying and celebrating? I do not want us to party. The movie is good. It's good to have black heroes, but I think we must do much better than celebration. Celebration is not enough. Where does it take us? Nowhere. We have to start thinking about making the transition from being consumers to producers. That's what black people need to be thinking. When we think about black history, we should be thinking that we are the progeny of a heritage of people who were really producers. They were business people, were, they were manufacturers. You hear of Timbuktu in the African past. That's what we want Black History Month to represent, to represent the kind of thing that makes us proud as Africans. So let's not waste time talking about a black person is in a movie, is a hero, Liliputa, Nyong'o. It's good to be a great actress, but this movie doesn't really do us a whole world of good, okay? So let us spend Black History Month thinking about our problems and how we can really solve these problems. Let us spend Black History Month learning about our history. So first, let's look at historical preoccupation. Where are we in history today? Those are the type of things I, I think we should focus on during Black History Month. Look at history. Where are we in history today? How are we doing? 
are we doing better than we were doing in the past? This is what historical preoccupation will do. Spend time thinking about your history. Because if you do not know your history, you cannot correct the wrongs of the past. So learn Black History during Black History Month. Next is self-consciousness. During Black History Month, we need to be conscious of ourselves as Black people, as Africans. This is the poetry of identity. Who are we? Self-knowledge is very important. We need to spend time discovering ourselves. Who are we? Let's go back, okay? Let's not waste time thinking about feel good, feel good. I feel so good. So what when you feel so good? So do something. We need to experiment with new ideas. This is what I think we should be doing during Black History Month. Okay, I move now to Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is a country in West Africa. Last week, we spoke about Liberia. Similarly, we're going to speak about Sierra Leone today. Sierra Leone was a country created by British abolitionists and philanthropists in 1787. Sierra Leone is actually part of what you call the triangular transatlantic slave trade. When the slaves were taken from Africa, from Sierra Leone, to the New World, which is the Americas, they work in plantations. After the abolition of slavery, most of the slaves did not like living in the Americas. They were looking for somewhere to go. Some of them even escaped and found themselves in England. During this period, a few abolitionists, such as William Wilberforce and Granville Sharp, who were British politicians also, and religious people, their conscience was really troubling them. So they wanted to do something to help these slaves. But the slaves could not really fit well in British society. So they decided to look for a province of freedom for these slaves. The province of freedom became Freetown. Freetown today is the capital of Sierra Leone. So this is how the slaves moved to settle and establish themselves in Sierra Leone, okay? Once they got there, just like in the case of Liberia, they had to deal with the natives who were already part of that world. In Sierra Leone, you have a lot of uh, tribes. When, when you look at ethnicity, you have the Mendes, you have the Timinese, you have the Lobo. So you have people of different, different tribes who are all living in this space. So. This explains why we always have issues with tribalism. Now that new elections are coming, President N.S. Bae Koroma is retiring soon. He has to make way for a new president. Right now, we have over 17 political parties in Sierra Leone. All of them are vying for the position of president. Who is going to be the successor of President Koroma. Of all the contenders, I think there are three principal guys who are receiving the, the most attention. First, we have Samura Kamara of the APC political party. Next, we have Julius Mada Bayo of the SLPP party. And we also have Kande K. Yom Kela of the NGC political party. So these are the three main candidates who are really receiving the most attention from the voters. Samura Kamara is the handpicked candidate of President NS by Koroma. Koroma will be retiring soon. He wants to make himself the chairman of the APC party. So which means even though he's retiring, he's going to stay in politics. Is this good for Sierra Leonean democracy? We don't think so. Sierra Leone is a country that is struggling to make a transition from a failed state to a new democratic nation. As such, it is not a good thing to have a president who wants to hang on and be the chairman of the party. It's going to create a conflict. We can predict this because we've seen how this worked out in Cameroon, for example. Amadou Aijo thought he could retire as president and remain as a puppeteer who pulls strings 
of Paul Bia. Little did he leave office that did he realize that he could not really control Paul Bia. So something similar may really happen in Sierra Leone, and we don't want that. To protect the fragile democracy in Sierra Leone, it would be a better idea for Bai Koroma to leave, exit the stage. All the world is a stage, and all the men and women are mainly players. That's what William Shakespeare teaches us. So, President Ernest Bai Koroma, you've served your two terms. Please retire to the sunset. Leave the politics. Let new players emerge and run the country. You've done your best, and we think your best was not really enough because we, we can really criticize you a whole lot. You tried to really manage inter-tribal and inter-religious strife, but your investment programs were not really that good. You came with the idea that you're gonna help the country avoid corruption, but your government has been very corrupt. You use big capital projects funded by China to siphon money from the country. Sierra Leone is a very poor country, yet President Koroma is one of the richest guys in Africa. So this is not good. Political office in Africa should not become a way to enrich yourself. When you do this, we say it is wrong. And that's why we're telling the people, do not vote for the APC this time in Sierra Leone, because it's going to be the same status quo, okay? We want to change the status quo. We want a new candidate to emerge. Samura Kamara is the puppet of President Koroma. Do Sri Lankans want to have a puppet? No, we don't think so. Sri Lankans want a fresh face. What about Jigas Mada Bayo? Well, he had run for office before and did not make it. He is a former brigadier of the army. He's really popular among some people in Sierra Leone. In fact, we've even gone on YouTube and watched some videos, and we've also watched some videos on Facebook. His rallies are really interesting because he even speaks to the people in Pigeon. I believe in you, in, in Sierra Leone. I don't make, I don't pass all over the world, but I know one day, one day, get any other passport apart from Sierra Leone. The passport of Sierra Leone and they understand the language, which is Creole. So he's a really charismatic uh, guy, but we think the person that we, we want to really endorse for this election is Kande K. Young Keller. He is the future of Sierra Leone. The African nation wants to endorse Kanda K. Young Keller. He is the right person for Sierra Leone because he is progressive. Look at his background. He doesn't come with a lot of baggage. Most of the politicians in Sierra Leone have a lot of baggage. So Sierra Leone needs a fresh face. Sierra Leone needs a new start. So we need somebody like Kande K. Young Keller for president of Sierra Leone. The youth are clamoring for him. In fact, the Corona gang was struggling to disqualify Kande K. Young Keller because they saw that this guy is great. The people love him. This is the man who represents the aspirations of the poor people of Sierra Leone. So the African nation, all the elders of the African nation are telling Sierra Leoneans to vote for Kande K. Young Keller. He is the right person today because he represents a progressive wing of the country. The poor people are supporting him and will urge Sierra Leoneans to support Kande K. Young Keller. He has international experience from the UN, so he can really navigate international waters for Sierra Leoneans. So we're telling Sierra Leoneans that the person who can help you guys win the future is Kande K. Young Keller. Next, we move to South Africa. South Africa is a country we've been talking about in our show quite a whole lot. We've been talking about corruption in South Africa. South Africa is a great country. After the whites handed it to, uh, to Africans, South Africa lost its shine. Since Zuma came, Jacob Zuma has just been a corrupt guy who has really been ineffective as a president. Cyril Ramaphosa is already poised to take over the leadership of the ANC party. So we think 
Jacob Zuma should really respect himself and leave the political stage. He's been a failure. He has not been able to solve the problems of the country, which include un unemployment and poverty. He has not been able to help the fate of the blacks. So he's really wasting his time. He's a shame. Every time there is more and more corruption. So we're really tired of corruption from this guy. Next, we move to Nigeria. Nigeria is the giant of, Af of Africa. We always like talking about Nigeria because we know that Nigeria is always in the news. Buhari, Muhammadu Buhari, who is the current president, came to power under the promise of solving two major problems. He's going to stop the menace of Boko Haram and he's going to make Nigeria more secure. When we look at it, President Muhammadu Buhari has really been ineffective. Every day, President Obasanjo is criticizing him. And more and more former leaders of Nigeria are joining the band. They are playing the music. Buhari must go. Buhari must go. Buhari must go. A few days ago, President Buhari was holding some meetings uh, with uh, his security officials. But the problem of President Buhari is he is ineffective as a manager. He's not someone who can handle crisis very well because he reacts to security threats instead of acting upon them. He is reactionary instead of acting. As a president, you need to have a plan. You don't just react to events. When you react to events, you are not the master of your destiny. So Nigerians must be masters of their destiny. But President Buhari is making them to be people who are like blind, who cannot see. Nigeria needs to be able to solve problems, all the threats that are going on now, but Buhari cannot really solve these problems. He's ineffective. When he campaigned as a crusader of freedom and anti-corruption czar, we are really surprised that during his tenure, there's more corruption in Nigeria. Corruption has become a culture. So what happened, Buhari? You were Mr. Clean. Where's the cleanliness? Now you are Mr. Derry. Okay? So you need to really have just one term. And we are telling Nigerians that Buhari will be the wrong person to run for re-election and win. So do not vote for Buhari again. We are encouraging Nigerians to vote somebody else. Because Buhari is all sick and ineffective. So Nigerians, please do not vote for Buhari again. His gang may be putting together all these plans to run again. Let's listen to what Obasanjo and the other leaders of the country are saying. IBB does not want Buhari. All those big guys who run Nigeria are saying that people of their old generation should make room for the young people. Look at France. France is run by a very young guy. What about Africa? Nigeria, you are the big daddy of Africa. So choose a young person to run for president next time. Let Buhari retire and go into the sunset. He has not been able to solve the problem of Boko Haram. He doesn't have the military strength that he projected. Boko Haram is still in the Zambisa forest and Buhari cannot go there to get them. Then you have the problem with the Fulanese and the farmers. Buhari is ineffective. He doesn't know what to say. Then you have the problem with the Igbos. The Biafra movement is hard. Buhari does not know how to handle it. And now Buhari is inserting himself into the Anglophone crisis in Cameroon. I don't know what is really happening to this guy. Why are you getting involved in the Anglophone politics in Cameroon? As a good neighbor, what you've done is against international law. You've taken freedom fighters from Nigeria and you've sent them to their enemies so that they should be killed. Is this somebody who understands international law? No, sir. What you've done makes a shame of international law. A country of laws cannot behave the way you did. So you should really be ashamed of yourself, President Buhari. What you've done is wrong. And we're urging Nigerians to join the choir of Obasanjo and the other people to sing songs of displeasure so that Buhari can leave Nigeria alone. Next, we move to Cameroon. Cameroon is a country that is in strife, civil strife as we speak. 
Some people even say it is really a war. What started as a peaceful protest has been activated into an insurgency. Anglophone Cameroonians were protesting against marginalization, but the government of President Paul Bia decided to use a tough hand to beat them up, kill them up, and now the people have conquered fear. They are not afraid to die anymore. The government thought intimidation could be used to silence most of these protesters, but it's not working. A few days ago, on February 11th, the president thought they could celebrate the youth day, but Anglophones remember February 11th as a very bad day. So they don't just want to celebrate for no good reason. So they just think that it is wrong to celebrate because this is a day of mourning, a day of rage. Their leaders have been held. Nobody has seen them. Some of them were abducted. Some of them have been killed. We think that Cameroon has done something really wrong. Bia is celebrating his 85th birthday while the country is burning. The youth day should not really be celebrated because the protesters have already warned that they're going to create problems and they've abducted even the district officer of Batibo. In Kembo, another village where more people were killed, there's more killing going on. So we just think that Bia needs to come to his senses. And if Bia can come to his senses, it will be a good thing for the whole of Cameroon. But apparently, Bia does not realize that this should happen. So we thank you for watching our show today. And we're encouraging everybody who believes in Africa, who loves Africa, to go to our YouTube channel and watch this video, share it with your friends. The only way we can create a revolution is when more and more people join us, when they join our cause, our cause is just. So please, go to our YouTube channel and watch this video and share this video. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters.